Amen. <laughs> it's such a blessing to be with you. You know, um, I know I'm reminded why I want to take Pastor Brian back to South Africa and keep him. <laughs> He's such a blessing. You know, I can win many wars with him by my side. <laughs> so I want you to know today the gift that you have in the house. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about your pastor. I'm talking about the leaders that you have. You don't neglect the gift. We spoke about um, to the youth and the young adults about don't neglect the gift. And uh, God places gifts in us and gives us people. And Pastor Brian Ronda is a gift. And I want you to celebrate them and know that God has placed them inside your life. Come on, let's give them a hand. <laughs> and it's interesting to me that um, when men and women of God arise all over the world, then people often persecute them till they die, then they celebrate them. Are you with me? <laughs> Let's celebrate them while we have them, while they're in our midst, while you know, we have access to them. Let's celebrate what God is doing in their lives and the work that He's doing. Amen? Let's pray and let's get into the scripture. Father, I pray for the word this morning, Lord. Holy Spirit, reveal your word. Give us revelation. I pray for every person that's in this room right now that you will open up their eyes so they would see in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Again, I want to honor Pastor Brian Ronda and the leadership. It's a blessing, you know, because of them, I would have never been here if I didn't meet them. And then there's another man that's connected to this, my spiritual father, Prophet Ed Trout. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have met them. So it's just a connection and a connection. God's building his kingdom and connecting people. God is relational. And if we're we part of God's kingdom, you need to know that we're part of relationships that God is forming. The person right next to you right now is more important than you realize. There's people in this room that you are connected to because your destiny is connected to them. The next season, your life is connected to them. And you need them more than you realize at this moment. Amen? We have to learn to honor Christ in one another. Don't look at the person next to you and just think, well, that's just, um, you know, my wife and, or just my husband. You know, there's a piece of Christ in them. They've got something in them that you need whether you like it or not. They, they've got something in them. And that something in them is going to move you to the next season. You know, there's been instances and times in my life where my wife was right. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to agree to it. But she was right. You know, if I drive and I get on the phone, I get lost. It always happens. I just, I, I get lost. I'll end up in a different city. But my wife is good with direction. And often we'll drive in the car and uh, I'll be on the phone busy and she can see that I'm lost. But she's waiting for the opportunity when I ask her and say, help me. So, you know, and I know I'm lost, but I don't want to admit it. So I'm driving and driving and driving. And, and eventually, you know, I say, okay, I'm lost. I've got no idea where I am. Help me. And she says, oh, no, just, just left here and right there and you're back on, back on the freeway. You know, for us to realize that we need help, is we have to admit that we lost. Yeah. We have to come to a place and say, well, I need, I need help. And that's, that's amazing to me how God has made some of us stronger in certain areas than others. And because of that, we need each other. You know, someone said to me, I made a statement, and they, and they said to me that you don't need people. And I don't agree with that. We need people. We need the people that God has placed in, inside our lives because we don't know everything. We all know in part. There's certain areas in my life that I'm strong, but there's certain areas in Pastor Brian's life that he's strong. And if I can learn from him, then I can grow myself and I can, I, I can become twice the person that I am. But I have to learn to submit myself to grow. Amen? Now, the first day when I met Prophet Ed Trout, um, I met him, met him um, you know, years ago, but four years ago, we had an encounter, five years ago, an encounter where I really met him at that moment. And when I saw him and the way he ministered, um, I remember looking at him and seeing how he prophesied. And when I saw that, I said to myself, I have to do that or I'll die. I have to minister in that way. I have to carry what he carries. Um, now, he is, he's a prophet, and you know, he's been all over the world. He's pioneered the prophetic in many nations, Switzerland, Germany, in America, and in South Africa itself. He's been pioneering the prophetic. You know? So he has paid an incredible price for the prophetic all over the world. He's got the marks and the scars and the stories to tell about what he went through and the persecution. Now, I love wisdom, and uh, so you know, I learn quickly. 
So when I met him and I heard about what he went through, immediately I realized that I want what he has, but I don't want to go through what he went through. You know, I don't want to bleed the way, he, you know, he bled. So I, I went to him um, and I said, listen, Prophet Ed, I want to learn everything from you before you die. So he said, are you prophesying that I'm about to die soon? I said, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you're carrying something and I want it. But I, I don't want to go through, you know, 30 years of training, stuff that you had to go through to be here. So I'm willing to submit myself and to learn from you. Now, it is sad to me that in the time that we're living in right now, the God is changing. I want to release a prophetic word on you this morning, and this is the word, the God is changing. Not just here in this region, but all over the world, the God is busy changing. What does that mean? It means that God has used leaders and many women of God all over the world, and the God is changing. New people are stepping up, and suddenly sons and daughters are becoming fathers and mothers. There's a shift that's taking place. Now, often we think that to be a father, a mother, or a man, a woman of God, we've got this idea what it should look like or what it should be. But God, in His ways, you know, He has the wisdom, you know, to use what we think or what we neglect, what we think there's nothing in. He's got the ability to use that and to make something great out of that. There's things that's happening in the spiritual world in South Africa, in America. You know, there's people that have passed away. There is leaders that have stepped down. And the God is changing as God is, is birthing the new leaders, the new men and women of God that will take God for the next 30 years, that will, try, that will move in the next movement that God has. Now, from the 60s, 70s, there's been movements the whole time. But the sad thing about the movements is that every movement only lasted for a generation. That when a movement started, it died with that generation. And in this generation right now, we're facing exactly the same thing. We have a movement, but it's coming to an end. And I have an urgency in my spirit that the movement will not die with this generation. We need it to be passed on to the next generation. Why do every generation have to start all over again? When God builds a kingdom... The kingdom continues to build. The wealth continues to multiply, multiply, multiply. It doesn't start all over again. When a new king steps up, he is reminded of what the glory, the history of the previous king was. All those achievements is connected to the new face, to the new king, to the new person. And that shift is taking place and we need people to stand up and to arise and step into their positions. Now, when Jesus came... He did not come to introduce a religion. He came to introduce a kingdom. And the function is very different. You know, in the entire Old Testament, it portrays a king and a servant type of relationship. There's a king and there's a servant, and the servant will never have what the king has. He'll always be a servant, Old Testament. In the New Testament, <laughs> Jesus comes and he portrays a father and a son relationship, a father and a daughter relationship. You know, when Jesus has to deal with the woman um, that was caught in adultery, at that moment when he's sitting there, it is a father that has to deal with a daughter at that moment. So it portrays different things. So now with that comes the authority and the power. Servants cannot walk in authority. Only sons and daughters can inherit and walk in authority. Now, I want to make the statement today, and I want to say to you that the size of a ministry is not defined by the members, but by the sons and daughters. We have churches today, and I honor the great men and women of God out there, but we have churches that have thousands of members, but they have no sons and daughters. What does that mean? It means that when the God is changing, that that movement or ministry will end with that person. Now, I want to ask you a question today. If Pastor Brian and Rhonda have to go and leave for three months, what would it look like? Will this ministry grow? Will it be, will it be in a better condition by the time when they return? Or will they have to return and restore a mess? Now, 
I'm talking about members. You know, it's not defined by the members. But, you know, today there's even people that is not even members yet. They're still goats. What is a goat? A goat is someone that jumps from field to field to field. Now, you need to understand that whatever field you eat from, that nutrition will grow in your spirit, and that is what will be manifested in the natural. So we have people that is not even members. They just jump from prophetic conference to prophetic conference, you know, from event to event. From, you know, they're not connected. But then we have people that have become members. They are excited to say that I'm a member of this church. But they come and they leave and they do nothing else. <laughs> I'm talking today about sons and daughters. Sons and daughters that's walking in the same authority and power that their father is walking in. Now, when it comes to spiritual fathers and mothers, immediately there is people, and let me tell you what it is. It is a religious spirit. Immediately there's people that object and say, well, I don't like this idea of a spiritual father. I don't like this idea of a spiritual mother. And I want you to get my heart, my spirit this morning. I'm talking about this because I'm talking about kingdom stuff. The idea here is not about someone that's in a position that's controlling other people. What I'm talking about, it is someone that's walking in a certain authority. And that authority needs to be passed on to the next generation, to the next person. There's people in this room this morning that have to step into a role where they have to become fathers and mothers. And, you know, there's this void right now, and it's both sides. It's not just the challenge, not just with spiritual fathers, but it's with sons and daughters as well. You know, the spiritual father or mother, they, can, they, they want to impart, they want to give, but we need sons and daughters that's willing to receive as well. When the day comes and you don't receive anymore, the problem is not with the pastor, but with the receiver. It's not the pastor who's cut off, you know, the place of receiving. It's the receiver. And it's so important for us today to honor leaders, to honor people, to honor one another. That's why I said to you this morning that there's a person next to you right now. And if you're struggling to honor them, at least honor Christ in them. Because they've got something in them that you need and that's vital to what God is doing with you and where it's taking you in the future. I remember a couple of years ago, I was with a specific pastor and, um, uh, in Singapore, and uh, we went to the meeting, and afterwards we went to a restaurant. We're sitting in this restaurant, and uh, the pastor said to me that this restaurant uh, belongs to one of the members in his church. And while we're sitting there, this lady comes, and he says to her, um, um, I haven't seen you in church uh, you know, for, for, some while, for, for a while. And she said, well, Pastor, we, um, we're not in the church anymore. We joined a different church. So he said, no, that's okay. But if I may ask, why, are you, why did you leave? So she, this lady responded. She said, um, well, my pastor that I'm with now says that you know, he's, he's, he's much older than you. And he says that you're a little bit young and a little bit immature to preach the word. And, and that's why we are with him. And he said, well, that, that's fine. Um, but he remembered that she had a daughter who was sick. And he said to her that, um, how's your daughter doing? I remember that she was sick. What is happening with her? So immediately this woman sat down at the table with us and she said, um, Pastor, yes, my daughter is still sick. Will you please pray and release a blessing upon my daughter? You know, we need healing in her life. So he responded and said, he said, well, don't you think you should maybe go to your pastor? Yeah who is more mature, you know, <laughs> let, let him pray. And, uh, so she responded and said the following thing. She said, my pastor does not believe in healing. And this is very important for you to get, because the tree that you eat from is the tree that you will receive from. So this is a lady that's sitting in a ministry that does not believe in certain things. And then when the hour comes of need, she does not have access to it because that's what she's connected to. When it comes to spiritual fathers and mothers, when the time of need comes in your life, the need can be met because of the tree that you're eating from. Okay? Now, I spoke to this uh, <laughs> in a church, and a lady came to me afterwards, and she said to me, Andre, uh, I, I heard the message, and, but I just want to tell you that I don't really agree with everything that they teach here. You know, um, I know that our church don't believe certain things, but I believe in it. Well, unfortunately, when you're connected to that household, right. when you're connected to that family, <laughs> you know, th this hand 
can go into a different direction than this hand is going. It's connected to the same vein, to the same muscle. <laughs> it can do its own thing. It's connected to the same body. I'm saying to you this morning, you need to be careful what you're connected with. When it comes to our need, I want to be connected to a family and a church that says, I believe in healing. Now, a sign of a church that says we believe in healing is a church that's praying for people. Not just saying that they believe it. You know, when a time of challenge or trouble comes in my life where I need a financial breakthrough, I want to be connected to a church that says we believe in God's, we believe in financial blessings. You know, a church that's sending a man from South Africa, Pastor Didi Tassan, that'll be here in a couple of weeks, a man that's extremely blessed, that can release something because a church believes in that. And that's why they're sending, that's why they're making that part of the meal that you're receiving because they believe in that. Now, when you become a son and daughter, you start to share in the inheritance and the power that is running in that ministry. Now, the sad thing about these movements is that 60s, 70s, 80s uh, produced movements. But the 90s started to produce celebrities. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly, we have men and women of God that have become celebrities. They're untouchable. They function in places and levels where, you know, everything is just built around them. One of the principles that I want you to know this morning is when we talk about spiritual fathers and mothers, a spiritual father is someone that you are connected with. It's someone that is within your reach. It is someone that you have access to. I have people today that say to me, Andre, this person is my spiritual father. And this person that I'm referring to, you know, he's got 5,000 sons. Well, I'm saying if you can't pick up the phone and call him and you don't have access to him, he's not your spiritual father. A father is someone that you have access to. It's someone that will pick up your call in the, in the time of a need. You know, as a prophet, I have to walk with integrity. And there has been times in my life where people have approached me and they said, Andre, we would, would you be a spiritual father to me? And because of the integrity in the prophetic, there has been times where I had to say no. And the reason is because when they phone, I will not be able to pick up that call. And because of that, I have to redirect them to the church. I have to redirect them and say, who is the person that you have access to? Who's the person, you know, that you're following? Who's the leader? Who's the pastor? Who's the one that you have access to? Follow them. Walk with them because they are going to be there daily in your walk with God. Amen? Amen. Now, when we look at the life of Jesus, and I want to just touch on a, on a couple of things quickly. The last verse in Malachi, um, chapter 4, verse 6 says, And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. So the last verse in the Old Testament, God is coming, is saying that I'm, re I'm reuniting the sons and the fathers, the daughters and the fathers. I'm connecting them again. Now, when you look at the life of Jesus, there's certain things that he understood. You know, as a kingdom citizen, as someone who came to portray a father and son relationship, there's certain things that he knew. Now, the things that he knew, the first things that I want to touch on this morning is that Jesus knew his identity, his purpose, and his origin. Those three things. Now, as a son and a daughter, you have to know your identity, your purpose, and your origin. Things that you need to know. Servants don't know that. Servants don't know their identity. They don't know their purpose. They don't know their, their origin. They just serve from day to day to day just to make it. They will never walk in authority. I want to take you to, you could read with me in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And uh, we want to run through this quickly. You know, in the life of David, in, in uh, um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, we see in the life of David, we see two fathers. We see Samuel, who is a spiritual father in the life of David, and we see Jesse, his natural father. Now, whenever God is ready <laughs> to promote you, he introduces you to a spiritual father. A spiritual father is one 
who looks at you and sees the potential that's inside your life. And sometimes that potential is hidden from a natural father. A natural father can't see the true potential, the gifting that's placed upon you that's there. So in the life of David, he has two fathers. Now, when it comes to Jesse as a natural father, there's a couple of things that he does. As a natural father, he hides him. He has no confidence in his potential. He has no prophetic insight into his destiny. He's embarrassed because David was the fruit of an affair. So his natural father is hiding him. When Samuel said, call all the sons, his natural father did not call him. He did not think that he's worthy enough to be in that meeting or to be there because his destiny was hidden from him. He was trying to hide David because of the past and things that was connected to David. But uh, Samuel, as a spiritual father, when he sees David, Samuel respects his uniqueness. Samuel has prophetic insight into his destiny. Samuel sees the hidden gift that God will, that, that will change a nation. And Samuel is honored to have met the next king and anointed him. Now, as a son, there's a couple of things that you need to understand, those three things, your identity, your purpose, and your origin. And in the life of Jesus, he understood his identity. He knew he was the son of God. Nowhere <laughs> was there a place where Jesus questioned his identity. He knew he was the son of God. There was a time where Satan tempted him, and Satan said, Oh, well, if you are the son of God, then prove it to me. You have to do this to be. But Jesus knew, you know, when, <laughs> when you know that you're a son, you don't have to prove anything. Right. Because he knew his identity. He didn't have to perform to be a son. It was in his DNA. You know, as a son, he knew his purpose. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Wherever he went, he knew what his purpose was. And he was looking for that. He was here to destroy the works of the enemy. Everywhere he goes, he's looking for that. Now, the, his, or, when it comes to his origin, he knew his origin. He came from the father and he would return to the father. There was no place where he panicked throughout his time on earth and worried about you know, his return. He knew where he was going. He knew where he was coming from. His purpose was made clear to him. He knew what was the purpose and reason why he was here. Today, we have people who live without purpose. They don't know what their purpose is. And constantly they're asking, what is my purpose? It's one of the questions that's being asked all over the world. Why am I here? What is, what is my purpose? People that's asking, what is my purpose, is people that is still servants. Because sons and daughters know their purpose. You know, I am a son before I am a prophet. I know my purpose. I know what God has called me for. I know what the purpose and the mandate is upon my life. And because of that, I can walk in authority because I know my purpose. I know my, my identity. I don't need someone to come <laughs> and confirm my identity because I found my identity. It was birthed in me. Now, as, uh, as true sons and daughters... Um, I want to give you a couple of characteristics um, when it comes to true sons and daughters. Um, true sons and daughters have the same spirit and are like-minded. You know, it's amazing with me and Prophet Ed. You know, he's a spiritual father to me. But even though he's in the spirit, he's a father to me. In the natural, there's so many things that we really like. We do things, you know, in the same way. We, we dislike the same things, you know. We like the same food. And that's just, it's not, it wasn't there in the natural. It was something that's spiritual. But suddenly we are like-minded. We think the same way because we have the same purpose. You know, true sons and daughters embrace and express the culture of the father. True sons and daughters know their position in the house. I always know my place because, I, because I'm a son. I know where I fit in. I know where's my place and where's my position. I don't have to fight for a position because I know my position. I know my place in the house. A true son and daughter share the father's heart. You know, there's so many things that I've picked up from Prophet Ed in his heart. You know, he's got a heart for the kingdom. He wants to see the kingdom advance. That's what's important for him. That's what he lives for right now is to impart, to train, and to equip. And I'm, I share in that. 
I have the Father's heart. I know the importance of that right now. Now, the difference between a son and a servant. The servant serves to get identity. The son serves from a position of identity. The servant fights to get promoted. The son serves to build the kingdom. The servant serves with wrong motivation. And the son serves to bless God's people. Now, I want you to know this morning that a spiritual father is not someone's opinion that you listen to, but rather someone's counsel that you follow. Okay? Because we have spiritual fathers today, and we just listen to their opinion. And when you don't agree with them, you say, well, I, I think it's, that's your opinion. A spiritual father is not someone's opinion that you listen to, but someone's counsel that you follow. You know, as I serve Prophet Ed, and as I'm connected to him as a spiritual father, there's things that he knows that he's been through, and he doesn't have the time to explain it to me. So we get to things, and I sometimes question it, and I, I say, well, I, I think there's a different way, but I've learned to follow his counsel because I've made decisions, and I've seen the outcome of it. And then I had to come back to him, and I had to say, if I would have just listened to you. <laughs> He said to me, don't do that. Be careful. But I didn't see it. But now I see it. And because of that, I've learned now to listen to his counsel. He doesn't have to explain it to me. When I phone him and I say, you know, I'm going through this right now. What do you think? What should I do in this situation? He doesn't have to explain it to me. I just need counsel. He just needs to say, well, this is what you need to do. Because I know that his motivation is to do the best that he can do for me. And I trust him in that. So when it comes to your spiritual father, you do not question his integrity. You don't question his dignity. You don't question his motives. And you don't question his ability to make decisions. Because you know that the decisions that they make is to advance the kingdom, to move the kingdom forward. And because of that, I trust him and I know his motivation. It's not to build himself up. It's not to build his ministry, but it's to impart so that the next generation can walk in greater authority than the previous generation. Now, how do you honor your spiritual father and mother? You honor them with your mouth. You honor them with your obedience. And you honor them with your finances. That's how we honor them. And it's important for us to honor the leaders and people that God has placed in our lives. You know, I, I, God has given me a time frame, a time limit with Prophet Ed. He's given me the time. He's told me how many years, exactly that. And I know that I have access to him for a certain time. He will not be there forever. I have access to him right now. Now, because of that, I pay the price, <laughs> and I pay the price willingly because, you know, what I receive from him, money cannot buy. Wow. So when I started to pursue him, I would connect with him. I would, I would find out where he is in the world, and he travels. You know, you know him as a church. Uh, he moves <laughs> the whole time. I've been in San Antonio now. He's, he's never home. He's always traveling and on the road. Um, when I just arrived in, uh, in uh, San Antonio, he was in Czech Republic, and then the next week in Germany, and he's just back now, and then he's leaving in a week. So he's just moving <laughs> the whole time. But I pay the price, and I try to sync my calendar to his calendar. I don't expect him to sync his calendar to mine. You with me? So I fall in with him because he has got something that I need. And right now, even though I, I add to his life, you know, with my mouth and with obedience and financially, you know, he's got something um, that I need and that I want, and I want the importation of that. But right now, there is nothing that I can really do for him. So in this relationship, I'm being blessed way more than he is blessed. Because he's got something that I need. He's got something that I want. Now, we have to learn to honor our leaders and honor the people that God has placed around us. Now, in this house, I believe that God is raising up leaders. I believe that God is raising up true sons and daughters. In Romans chapter 1, verse 11, he writes and he says, 
I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Now, when it comes to spiritual inheritance, it cannot be passed on to servants. It can't, a spiritual inheritance cannot be passed on to a natural son. It is not you know, automatically being passed on. So therefore, the son, and I'm not saying that a natural son cannot become a spiritual son. You need to understand that. When a natural son learns to see huh, the anointing and the hand of God upon their fathers, then they can be equal partakers, equal partakers in the spiritual blessings that they carry. But they have, they have to learn to look beyond the natural, not just see the limitation that's there, but to see the spirit that's upon their lives. I travel a lot with Prophet Ed, and because of that, you know, there was a time in my life four or five years ago where I looked at him, and I would have given anything to be in the same room with him, anything. I looked at him, I would have, I would have been willing to pay any price just to be close with him, just to be in the same car with him, just to sit in the same room with him. Now, because he's a spiritual father to me now, I have access to him. So I travel with him. I spend time with him. We stay in the same hotel. So we stay sometimes in the same room. You know, we spend a lot of time in the car. But even in that, I have to learn to continue to honor him. There's times when I get tired. There's times when I get frustrated. But then I have to remind myself who I'm sitting with. I have to remind myself that there was a day where I said I would give anything to be in the same room with him. So even though he's a father to me and there's things that we have in common and we can have fun and we can enjoy things together, there's still a boundary that I will never cross. There's still a place of honor and respect that I will never go. You know, as soon as I said it last night to the young people, you know, something that is familiar, when it becomes too familiar, it becomes unfamiliar. So even though he's familiar to me, I can't allow him to become too familiar. And he cannot allow me to become too familiar. Right, right. Because as soon as something becomes too familiar, we forget to honor it. We forget to respect it. Listen, when your wife, wife or husband and spouse becomes too familiar, they become unfamiliar. We have to learn to celebrate the people that we have with us. We have to learn to honor those that God has placed inside our lives. I'm standing here today, and there's people that I'm connected with. There's people that made this possible. I'm standing here today because of a spiritual father, a person that have touched me. You know, I've been in ministry this year for 18 years, and I'll, I'll never forget the time, the moment. 15 years in ministry, I was ordained by Prophet Ed. The day when he ordained me, when he placed his hands on me, when he anointed me, <laughs> everything changed. Yeah. Everything shifted. What I couldn't accomplish in 15 years, when I was anointed, it happened in one year. <laughs> there was an acceleration that started to take place when a spiritual father stepped into my life. He started to accelerate everything. Everything. My finances started to get accelerated. Relationships started to get accelerated. Everything was changed. I look today at the point or the place where things started to change in my life. And I trace it back to that place. I trace it back to that moment where things was activated. Things has changed at that moment and at that time. I'm here this morning and I'm here to remind the sons and daughters about what they carry. I'm here this morning to encourage you to step into the position that God has called you to, to step into. God didn't call you just to be a member. He definitely did not call you to be a goat. God has called you to be a son and to be a daughter. To step into your true identity. Now, when you step into your identity, when you become a son and a daughter, and this is what it's all about, the difference between a child and a son is responsibility. That's the difference. 
Because children don't have responsibility. They don't take responsibility. I'm a child. I'm young. I look at my son. He's four years old. And, you know, there's things that he can get away with right now because he's a child. But if he's, if he's going to do that same thing when he's 16 years old, the outcome is going to be different. <laughs> Because then I expect something else from him. Then he becomes a son. And then it's not funny anymore. <laughs> then we're not going to laugh anymore. Then I expect him to make better choices, to respond differently. I want to ask you this morning, and um, I'm, I, there's no judgment. If you're a, member, if you are a visitor here this morning and you're from a different church or place, I want you to understand the importance of being connected to a spiritual father or mother. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's the kingdom that needs to advance. That's what it's about. You know, there's a scripture that I, that I learned very early in my life. Um, it's, I think it's Moses 1 verse 1 or something. It says, when you're dumb, you have to suffer. Okay. We have to learn. Why do you want to walk this journey of 20, 30 years and go through all these things if there has been someone that has already been through it. And that's why when God introduces you to a spiritual father, it's someone that steps into your life. It is a mentor. It's a coach. It's someone that trains you, someone that advances you, someone that has the ability to ignite the potential and giftings inside you. Suddenly it grows. Suddenly it blooms. It starts to function. It's been there all the time, but it's been neglected. Now I'm saying to you that there's people in this room and maybe you've just been a member of this church, of this ministry. But I'm here today to say to you that we need the sons and daughters to stand up. The enemy, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I want you to understand right now, whatever you're going through, you need to see and realize it is the enemy that's behind it. Listen to what I'm saying. It's the enemy that's behind it. He's the one that still kills and destroys. Don't look at the situation. Don't look at what you're seeing. Don't look at the crisis. That's not what it's about. Don't look at the person, the individual. There's something behind it. And that's the devil. <laughs> and he is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But as a son and daughter, you can walk in authority. Now, the amazing thing about the authority about Jesus because he knew his identity he did not try to deliver people from demons when he walked into a room they left because he knew his identity they responded they left church I'm saying to you to, <laughs> this morning if you know your identity demons will flee if you know your identity the attack that's happening in, right now in your life will stop immediately. And that's what I want you to realize to, tonight, is to, this morning, don't look at the situation, look at the crisis, look at your identity. Look at what you're carrying. <laughs> look at what you have. I was saying to the young to the youth last night, you know, this thing about Renaissance pictures, uh, Renaissance pictures paint certain pictures and it gives us idea and the wrong idea. The wrong picture gives you the wrong idea. And today we're walking with things. And one of those things is the enemy. There's people that are going to be very disappointed one day when they get to see Satan. Because he's a lot smaller than they think. Renaissance pictures have made him this huge thing and God this small thing. No. There's people that are going to be very disappointed one day when they see themselves in the spirit. And they realize the power that they've had that they've never used. Today I want to see, I want you to see yourself. I want you to see the identity that you're carrying, that you have upon you right now. I'm speaking to members of this church right now. I'm speaking to people who's part of this ministry, that's connected to this household. I want to ask a question. I want you to listen carefully, respond to what I'm saying. If you see yourself, if you see yourself as a son or daughter of this ministry, I want to ask you to stand and come to the front. If you see yourself as a son and a daughter of this ministry, I want you to come to the front. I want to invite Pastor Brian Ronda, please come stand here with me.
make some room for more people if you can push a little bit. You see yourself as a son and daughter of this ministry. Just come to the front. I love that, I love that scripture. I want to read it again. <laughs> Romans 1.11. He says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. I long to see you. <laughs> he's saying to the church, he's saying to his, <laughs> to his leaders, to his disciples, I long to see you because I want to impart to you. You know, we need times of impartation. We need times where we impart. And this morning is a time of impartation. There's things that they carry in their lives that they have upon them. They have, they have a journey. <laughs> this building didn't just happen. Ministry didn't just happen. There was a process. There was a journey. There was things that they went through. They have fought battles. <laughs> They've been through financial things. But today they're standing here and there's a victory that they have upon them. And the good news is that you don't have to go through the same thing. Come on, listen to what I'm saying. You don't have to go through the same thing. You don't have to go through the same thing. Whatever they've been through can be imparted into you. They can accelerate your destiny. They can accelerate your position. When Prophet Ed imparted to me, it accelerated everything in my life. Everything got accelerated. I was limited to one nation. When he touched me, the world opened. 32 nations opened. 32, when he touched me, 32 nations opened immediately. <laughs> one touch because of what he carried. And because I stepped into my position, I realized that I'm just, I'm not a child anymore. I, I'm a son. I'm a son. And I'm going to carry the DNA of the Father. In the position where God has called you, whether it's business, whether it's in the medical field, whether it's in a whatever the position is, the acceleration that they have in their lives can accelerate you in that position, can accelerate you in that place. Amen? I want you to take the responsibility. Those of you that have taken responsibility, I want you to hold on to that. But those of you that haven't taken responsibility, what? For this ministry. Praying for your leaders. Praying for them. How many of you are really praying for them? I know they're praying for you. I know that. But are you praying for them? Are you taking time out of your day to pray for them? That God would sustain them? That God would uphold them? Are you praying for your leaders? Because we need them. This city needs them. This church needs them. And unfortunately, they're not going to be here forever. But whatever they carry needs to be imparted into the next generation. It needs to be imparted. I want you to close your eyes for a moment and just put up both of your hands. I want to ask Pastor Brian Ronda just to stretch out your hands to your sons and daughters. Not servants, sons and daughters. I want you to receive. I want you to receive this morning. It is impartation. The great thing about impartation is you don't have to work for it. Someone else paid the price. Someone else worked for it. And this morning, you can just receive it. You're standing in that position. And when you stand in that position, you're receiving. Father, I declare right now, as Pastor Brian and Rona stretch out their hands, I declare right now, financial acceleration financial blessing, financial breakthroughs. Father, I declare right now, spiritually, spiritual blessings that will come upon the sons and daughters. I pray for wisdom, wisdom that will come upon them. Father, I pray all spiritual blessings. I pray for healing. I pray for breakthrough. The things that they had to conquer, the giants that they had to fight. I declare that those same giants will fall in the lives of the sons and daughters. <laughs> when, David died, when David dealt with Goliath, <laughs> no one else had to deal with him again after that. <laughs> they have dealt with the giants. They have fought them. And you can share, you can be an equal partaker this morning in the breakthrough and in the blessing. 
Father, I release upon every son and daughter of this house right now. Acceleration. 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 Father, we give you all the glory. God, this is kingdom. We are building your kingdom. We're building your kingdom for your glory. Not for our glory. For your glory. Thank you, Father, that you're saying that you're, you are building your church. And nothing, nothing will stand against it. You're building these people, kingdom citizens this morning, that's standing in their positions. Some of them that's becoming fathers and mothers that have to start to impart into others, that have to step in. I want to ask just as a prophetic action, if um, Pastor Ali or Tracy or Philip or Amy is in the room, just one of them, just to join me on stage. Except just one of them in the room. Because some of you that have to become fathers, you have to step up. You have to step up in your position. It is important that what you carry is being imparted into the next generation. Imparted. Come, Pastor Ali. Just stretch out your hands. Just stretch out your hands. Thank you, Father. As he stretches out his hands, I call the sons and daughters to stand up in authority to become fathers, to become mothers, to start to train and to impart into the next generation, to realize that there's people around them, it needs to advance, it needs to be imparted, the wisdom in this place. People that carry wisdom in this place, wisdom in business, in the business world, it needs to be imparted. People that's carrying wisdom when it comes to, the, to give things, it needs to be imparted into the next generation. We want to see the next generation grow, be more effective, build upon this generation. I declare this morning that what God has done in this house, in this ministry, that it will not end. It will move on to a next generation and it will become more powerful. I declare that right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.